Welcome to Trinity 13 and our Sunday series in Trinity, Followers of the Way. Today we're walking honestly. Last week we talked about walking thankfully and during that reflection I made the comment that being thankful wasn't about suppressing our natural reactions when times were tough. This week, I hope, offers a follow-up plan of action when thankfulness seems impossible. Jeremiah's relationship with God was really strong. God called Jeremiah when he was a teenage boy and he was Jeremiah's sole companion. He's often called the weeping prophet and he, of all the prophets, exposes God's heart. We all cry at some stage in our lives and sometimes when I hear a baby cry I think that sound represents all that's still going on inside adults. So often you hear the phrase, I lost my faith, when someone goes through a devastating experience and they kind of mean where was God when? Why did God allow this to happen? What have I done to deserve this? And a rift has opened up as God is seen as cruel or capricious or at best absent. Are you asking these kinds of questions right now or have for a while? Because I'm not going to jolly you out of them. There's 101 reasons why God might seem distant. Any one of us might be tired or ill or emotionally exhausted or demanded of him any directions and all the right things have become tick lists or dropped off our agendas. We may have snacked spiritually on one-liners for too long rather than nourish ourselves with proper soul food. God might be testing our faith. Do you trust me even though you can't see me? We may be genuinely victims of injustice and violence. Yes, there's any number of reasons why our walk with God might be less than sparkling and we, we, we can be honest about that with him too. I do believe that when we come back to the word of God and we eat it, as we will hear Jeremiah did, then it is as if the Holy Spirit makes it a refreshing stream to our hearts. Well, today is about honesty. There has to be honesty about what we're experiencing or there's no hope of healing. There has to be humility before God or there's no hope of help. What help is there if God has been written out of the script altogether? Laments hold honesty and humility together, and this is a lament in the formal sense of the word. Why is Jeremiah voicing this lament at all? Well, despair and confusion is the stuff of lament, whether personal or not, and Jeremiah hasn't done anything wrong. No, he's lamenting for the state his country's fallen into and how far short they've fallen from God's intention for them. In their own times, Moses and Daniel do the same. But mainly Jeremiah's complaining about the devastating message God has given him for the people of Judah. God is envisaging the moment when the Babylonians will arrive and overrun Judah. They're vicious warriors. They don't care about destruction of homes, families or young children if you can. Listen to these distressing words at the end of Psalm 137. It's what Judah experienced at the hands of the Babylonians, and these really are not easy words to hear, so be ready for them. O oh, daughter Babylon, you devastator, happy shall they be who pay you back what you have done to us. Happy shall they be who take your little ones and dash them against the rock. This was the way the Babylonians would dominate. It's a terrible message Jeremiah has for Judah, and he already knows that no one will take him seriously because of their false sense of security. Oh, we have the temple, they say, we'll be okay. We're God's people, they say, we'll be okay. But they aren't being God's people, not for real, in practice. And they aren't okay. In rehearsing our complaints against God, we forget that God has lamented first. He's got him first. Lament doesn't just belong to humanity. God's complaints require an answer of us just as much as ours do of him. Jesus' utterance of woes against the Pharisees were a lament. His weeping over the city of Jerusalem on the Mount of Olives was a lament. There's no wonder Jeremiah comes to God with a heavy heart. I can't give them this message, he says. 
Well, that's the message and that's the warning, says God. So Jeremiah addresses God with a directness that says it how it is. Jeremiah 15, 15. O oh Lord, you know. Remember me and visit me and bring down retribution from me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you, for I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. Now, despite Jeremiah's lifetime commitment to speaking God's word to those who are hostile, it looks as if God has deceived him, like a brook that's run dry. So God's blessing seems to have dried up. And Jeremiah reproaches God because he knows God. There's no hint of disrespect or arrogance in his honesty. There's that balance of honesty and humility again. God's heartbeat has always been Jeremiah's heartbeat. Your words were found and I ate them and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. He belongs to God. He bears his name. He is God's man. Now, Jeremiah's lament might give us a way of articulating how we feel to God, a new and different script, if you like, for us. Jeremiah's laments, poems in times of distress and confusion, are honest prayers that will lead to trust. The Psalms are songs of lament as well as songs of praise. A lament is more than just bringing sorrow or sadness or confusion or hurt or bitterness or suffering to God. Laments are statements of faith. Laments go somewhere. They don't just go in circles like most complaints. A lament allows us to sit with pain of body, mind or spirit and sit with God at the same time. As one preacher put it very well, I thought, Laments stand in the gap between pain and promise. There's a pattern to these laments. He starts, Jeremiah starts, as does the psalmist, with an honest cry to God about how he's suffering. And then he questions God, asks for his enemies to meet their just deserts, then requests rescue, and then says how much he trusts God and God responds. A lament turns to God, not away from him. A lament complains honestly, specifically, sometimes very bluntly. It comes from the heart. It asks the questions. A lament asks God to be true to his character and his promises. It asks for resolution. It makes requests boldly. A lament trusts even through the tears. It affirms statements of who God is into whose hands we commit our lives. God has invited us to take the initiative to lament. God has invited us to summon him. Call on me in the day of trouble, God says. And so Jeremiah does. And God responds to Jeremiah's complaint. He's equally as honest as Jeremiah has been. Theirs is a robust and healthy relationship. God reminds Jeremiah that the suffering he's experienced is the way it is with all his messengers. Jeremiah is not to crumble, but recommit to his tough prophetic calling. God will not be derailed by the enemies he shares with Jeremiah. In time, he will deliver and vindicate his man. Are you rehearsing a story that could be turned into a lament? Is it a personal story? 
Or is where God has placed you and what he's given you to do challenging? I had a tough teaching job in an inner city comprehensive. It drove me to God in a way I've not been driven since. My church ministry hasn't always been easy, easy either. Not all Christians are light and salt. We're all work in progress. Some of you live with challenging family circumstances or have neighbours from hell. So where has God placed you? Where do you live or work or play or worship? Has Jeremiah experienced opposition for being true to God? We've seen reprisals for those who've stood up for their Christian principles and convictions, and I believe we will see more in the UK. Following Jesus is not a decision to take lightly. In other cultures, there are already serious life-threatening consequences for people who follow Jesus. Well, what's the alternative to lament? Probably resentment, blame, the hamster wheel of bitterness. Now, the blame culture is not for the Christian. A Sioux society is not a kingdom concept. Blame and bitterness only raise blood pressure and harm the person who feels so wronged. And in turn, bitterness pollutes everyone who's within earshot. Read Hebrews 12, 15. Lament takes the bitterness and gives it somewhere to go without denying the hurt and the pain. We bring our experience to God because only he understands what's going on. A lament remembers that God's ways are not our ways, his thoughts not our thoughts, and yet we know our God understands what it's like to walk this world. God loves honesty. Reread Jesus' conversation with the Syrophoenician lady in Mark 7. Honesty doesn't always have to be when we feel low or hurt or sad or bitter. Honesty is just articulating how it is for us to God and respecting his answers. In the case of the Syrophoenician lady, she came back at something Jesus said with a witty, gritty, honest answer. And he loved it. How real is your relationship with God right now? You may like to pray the words of Psalm 130. It's a lament in which the psalmist calls out to God from the depths of human suffering. He has every confidence that God will hear and respond to his cry. Thank you.
almighty God, you search us and know us. May we rely on you in strength and rest on you in weakness now and in all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.